Director of Marketing Information Session and a Masterclass on Brand Challenges. When does social media and customer experience strategy count? I'm Professor Aaron Ocas. I'm the head of the Department of Marketing. Tonight, we have three guest presenters who are staff in the department, Dr. Rico Pillar, Dr. Helen Suki, and Dr. Abbas Merzai. Just some housekeeping, this session will be recorded. Please ensure to maximize your webinar experience. You mute your microphone. If you have any questions of our presenters, please use the Q&A function in the toolbar at the bottom of your screen. All questions will be moderated by myself during the session and will be responded to live during our online session. Just some overview of the Master of Marketing. It's a pretty experienced course that has a very heavy applied marketing management and strategic marketing focus. It's really oriented towards presenting an immediate, intermediate practitioner oriented program. Thinking about why you should apply for the Master of Marketing, we really tailor this course to those that are looking to upskill and fine tune their marketing management and strategic decision making skills and abilities. Those that are trying to move to a higher level in marketing roles and those wanting to develop deep sound marketing knowledge, analytical skills and critical thinking ability, really sort out the skills in the job market. The course director is Associate Professor Vita Siatiri, so please feel free to reach out to her if you will. So the objectives of our course are six underpinning pillars. The first is it is a premier program for emerging markets, marketing specialists. The Master of Marketing is ranked number one in Australia and 19th globally by the Kapali Simons or what's referred to the QS ranking system, which is a very high quality global ranking system. It's accredited by the Australian Marketing Institute and the department is actually a strategic partner with the Australian Marketing Institute. The course combines functional knowledge with a heavy emphasis on applied skill, which is theory and practice combinations. It's aimed at those wishing to be marketers who have some marketing education and work experience. And our units are delivered in various modes, online, face-to-face -face, and blended delivery. It really equips students with very significant industry relevant skills and prepares them for marketing positions or promotion through the marketing ranks. We have heavy engagement with industry partners. We work closely with organizations like H&R Block, Optus, Bayer, Woolworths and a range of other large Australian organisations. So our partnership ensures engagement and relevance of the marketing knowledge and skills we're developing. It offers a very engaging and applied approach. I'll now hand over to Dr. Hiller on brand challenges. Thank you very much, Aaron. Um, and welcome to today's webinar. Uh, I would like to start by introducing some of the challenges that brands nowadays face. And then later, my colleagues, Helen and Abbas, will talk about how you can address and solve these challenges through digital and social media marketing and customer experience management. So as you will be fully aware, branding is universal and pervasive in many different contexts in the business to consumer segment, business to business segment, many different industries, for goods, services, people, groups, places, etc. And there's definitely no doubt that brands are important, on the one hand, for consumers, because they simplify decision making. So, from an information processing perspective, brands lower the search cost. Just imagine a supermarket without brands. How long it would take you to do your grocery shopping? an hour, a couple of hours, a day, even more. The second function of brands is that they are signals. Due to the information asymmetry that companies and brands know more about the quality of their products than consumers, consumers experience uncertainty. And brands can help to reduce that uncertainty by signaling a certain product quality and other characteristics. The third function is related to risks that consumers experience in the buying decision process. 
And there are a large number of uh, different risks associated with buying decisions, functional risk, financial risk, social risk, physiological risk, etc. And brands can help again to reduce these risks in the buying decision process. Another important function of brands for consumers is that they can be relationship partners for consumers. So quite often consumers build very close relationships with brands, sometimes treat them like human persons, um, particularly in high involvement campaigns. And finally brands, and that's a really important function, also are symbolic devices. They have a symbolic meaning, which means they can be used to confirm or to enhance consumer self-identity. So think about luxury products and luxury brands that can signal a certain group membership, prestige, or project someone's self-image. On the other hand, brands are also important for companies. There are a couple of important functions. The first one is from a legal perspective. You can protect your brand. You can protect the brand elements, the brand name, the logo, characters, the slogan, so that other competitors cannot use these elements. A second important function is that you can equip your products, particularly in saturated markets, where there's no real differentiation on the functional level between the different products. And you can add non-functional characteristics, benefits like emotions or symbolic benefits. Think about Coca-Cola, who added um, happiness as an important part of their association, associative network. A third function, and that's pretty obvious for companies, strong brands can realize a high price premium. Think about Apple and think about the prices for the iPhones in comparison to the prices for a competitive product. Brands definitely shape the preferences for company offers. Brands can actually alter and change your sensory perception um, like it has been shown in many blind tests. Brands can be a source of future growth. So if you have a very strong brand, it is easier for you to introduce new products as line extensions in your own product category or to expand to other product category as category extensions. You can also use brands to segment the market and to target specific segments in the market with particular brands. So if you have a portfolio of brands, many brands within your company, like the Volkswagen Group, for example, you can target specific segments. You can target a segment with the Volkswagen brand, another segment with the Skoda, Seat, Audi, or Porsche brand. Um, brands can also are uh, also really important in order to create customer loyalty. And again, think about Apple, a brand that has achieved, achieved regularly a very, very high customer loyalty. And from a company's perspective, that's really important because you can predict your demand in the future period. And that is again, very helpful, very beneficial uh, on the financial markets for banks if you wanna get a loan or for the stock market. So overall, all these functions um, that I've described contribute to the financial return of the company. And if you look at the current interbrand ranking, the ranking of the most valuable global brands, you can see that Apple is valued, only the brand Apple is valued at 322 billion US dollars. And that's quite a huge intangible asset. And in order to manage brands and be successful in branding, there are a lot of contemporary brand management approaches out there that we're gonna teach here. One is the identity-based brand management approach that not only considers the external perspective of the brand, how consumers perceive the brand, the brand image, but also the internal perspective of the brand, the brand identity. And the idea of brand management is to manage the customer expectations and the customer experiences. In particular, the customer experiences is something that Abbas will talk about later a bit more detail. And how you manage um, the customer expectation and the customer experiences is through the brand promise, the brand positioning and the brand benefits, and through the brand behavior, which is also employee behavior. And in order to successfully manage brands, particularly for practitioners, we use a brand management process, a very simple process with a strategic brand management. So based on your situation analysis and based on your brand objectives, you make major decisions regarding the strategic direction of the brand. You decide about the brand identity, the brand positioning, the brand architecture. So if you have a brand portfolio, how do you define the relationship between the brands and the brand evolution, the development of the brand over time. 
In the second stage in operational brand management, you make decisions about implementing internally and externally the strategic decisions that you have made. And finally, obviously, in the end, you have to uh, do a performance measurement. You have to check if you have achieved your objectives that you set in the strategic brand management process. However, nowadays, brands face a number of challenges. And uh, we can go from a academic perspective. We obviously have an opinion on what these challenges are. But because we, we are closely aligned with our industry partners, we went out to the industry and asked practitioners, marketing managers, with branding responsibilities about their perceptions. What are their main challenges that they face nowadays? And the first challenge that they mentioned is the brand relevance. So a managing director of a brand consultancy here uh, mentioned that it's really challenging to maintain brand relevance over time. When new competitors enter the market, when consumer attitudes, consumer behavior change. So this is one of the important aspects here that can be addressed in our brand management model. The second challenge that was mentioned by the practitioners is how do you manage a portfolio of brands? Nowadays, many companies not only have one brand, they have dozens of brands, even hundreds or thousands of brands. And it's a, obviously one of the biggest challenges for them, how to manage that there's not a big overlap between the brands. How do you keep the brands distinctive within your portfolio? A third challenge that was addressed by the managers is the internal perspective. So if you have a look at the quote here, there are many organizations where it's a close correlation between the employee experience and the customer experience. So brands have to think about, in the end, employees are always responsible for the fulfillment of the brand promise. And therefore you have to think about how can I build brand understanding among my employees that they understand what the brand is all about, what the brand promise is, how they are supposed to behave, how they act as brand ambassadors. So that's an important challenge uh, mentioned by the practitioner. The next challenge, and that's already part of my colleague's presentation, is the digital transformation. So no doubt digital transformation for many brands and many companies was on their agenda for the next three, four, five years. COVID has significantly accelerated these developments. So they had sometimes had to transform their business model within a year. And there are certainly a lot of challenges associated with that. One challenge here is mentioned by the uh, practitioners, social media as both an opportunity, but also the greatest challenge for companies because how they get actually engagement on social media. And that's something that Helen will talk about a bit more in detail. Kind of related to the digital transformation is the customer empowerment because it enabled consumers, they are more in control of the interaction of the conversation about the brand. And it's a pretty um, uh, interesting quote here. So as soon as you have a new product out there, multiple people are reviewing it. And the, the practitioner mentioned that brands have lost their kind of shield of armor um, because it's one of the biggest challenges now that you get, probably get thousands of potential reviews on what you actually do. And that's definitely different than 10, 15, 20 years ago and companies and brands have to deal with that. Another challenge is the change of brand touch point. So as mentioned here, the proliferation and fragmentation of platforms, and that's going to continue in the future. So how do we manage brands in these changing circumstances? How do you manage the brands in these fragmented worlds? How do, do you bring your brand alive? How do you create new brands? How do you depend against new types of competitors, against disruptors in this new world? And finally, kind of related to the challenges of the brand touch points is the customer experience. And as mentioned here, um, the, the one thing that is really important, it's very easy for you to develop a brand positioning and to communicate your brand promise, but the big challenge is actually to keep that promise and to deliver the brand experience along all the brand touch points that you have available. And because the digital transformation and customer experience management is such an important challenge for companies, my colleagues, Helen and Abbas, will talk a little bit more in detail about these two subjects. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm going to today talk about digital and social media marketing. 
And so we're gonna start with a very simple definition of digital marketing. Digital marketing is when brands achieve marketing objectives through applying digital technologies and channels. It has six elements. So first, brands need to have an engaging website. Website is the heart of um, brand's digital presence. And also search engine optimization or SEO. So search engine optimization means when you search for a keyboard, in Google search, for example, you see some organic links and, um, and different pages, and you also see some ads sponsored links. So for the uh, organic um, searches, we uh, the organic results, we call them SEO which, uh, or um, search engine optimization, and the other um, sponsored ads are PPC. So we call them PPC or pay-per-click advertising. And email marketing, so emails are also outbound communication from a company to their customers to engage them and, and to encourage them to make a purchase and also to achieve other branding goals. Uh, and the next one is social media marketing. So using social media platforms to connect and communicate with our customers. And so all of these techniques will help marketers to um, and brands to approach a wider and broader um, customers range of people in different geographical locations more cost effectively and more quickly. So new opportunities, as we said, these uh, digital channels and technologies provide new opportunities for brands. For example, they can use these channels and technologies to buy the application of the marketing mix. So, you know, marketing mix, we have four piece or we have seven piece, for example, four piece product, uh, product, price, promotion, and um, yeah, place. So with them, for example, they can use digital technologies uh, to um, introduce new digital products, like you know, um, live streamings, or they can offer lower or more flexible or dynamic uh, pricing. For example, what Amazon does. They are in Amazon, they um, offer dynamic pricing throughout the day and also offer more purchase sorry, or distribution options. For example, online delivery, click and collect, etc. And also they can use it to develop new routes, new routes to deliver uh, competitive advantages uh, using digital technologies and channels, including uh, artificial intelligence or AI, virtual re reality, uh, VR or internet of things, IoT. Um, the next one is to create new market positions using these um, digital advances and to build long-term relationship using social media as well as customer um, uh, relationship management applications or CRM applications. And to cut through the barriers of time and space, for example, customer now can do their online shopping online 24-7 or you have access to avoid the range of product offerings uh, from international markets. So all of these have been uh, enabled uh, through digital marketing and social media marketing. So now um, this is customer lifecycle marketing touch points. Digital marketing expanded the uh, marketing touch points. So uh, according to race um, model, so to reach, act, convert, and engage customers, we have some more options nowadays. Uh, these options can be paid, pay, owned media, or in media or experiences. For example, to reach customers uh, in the first stage that you can see, we can obviously use some traditional marketing options. For example, television, radio, or print. We can also use some uh, digital marketing um, options like SEO, as we discussed, search engine optimization, which is the organic ranking, and content marketing, which is great, especially in B2B marketing, and also we can use display, uh, interactive display, advertising, etc. And for um, all the other stages also. For example, in the next stage, which is active, the first purchase may happen. Again, there are other options. Remarketing, use, uh, use of social media, influencers marketing, etc. So yeah, digital transformation. So as we go mentioned, I'm going to uh, talk about digital transformation, brand, had to turn to digital marketing to survive, especially in 2020 in the due to COVID pandemic. 
Um, so I'm gonna uh, talk about some uh, first. Um, we, we're gonna briefly talk about this, and, and I'm gonna share some great examples with you. So digital transformation is the strategic adoption of digital technologies. A good digital transformation is customized and personalized for each company. Digital transformation, as Rico mentioned. Um, was accelerated during COVID-19 pandemic. And brands had to turn uh, to digital marketing to survive. As this graph shows, for example, in the banking industry, before 2020, we had only, we had 25% uh, digital adoption. However, in less than one year, they had to, it, it increased to 73%. And um, also, so the, the highest uh, accelerate, uh, digital adoption the highest uh, digital adoption was in grocery uh, and in entertainment. Um, so um, it's obviously due to like social distancing and um, all of these lockdown uh, rules happen in different companies. Okay, now social media marketing. How principles for uh, success? How brand can use social media marketing uh, to um, you know build a better relationship for customer service and for other uh, you know um, um outcome desired outcome for the brand so first they need to be participatory in social media the successful brands interact with their community and with the customers and uh, they are very active in this space and uh, they interact with people and so for example um taco bell Nike, Charmy, they are great, great examples of successful brand owning this space. Um, customer service is part of the entire buying cycle. So it's a, a form of marketing and definitely a part of sales. So the best brands take advantage of every interaction with their customers to offer value to them and impress them and hopefully to uh, get them on board and turn them to loyal customers and brand advocates. So the brands uh, such as Nike and Taco Bell, as I said, they are very successful in using social media marketing. For example, Nike uses um, uh, at Team Nike. So every, every time a, a customer on Twitter use this um, at, so at um, Team Nike, they, um, they just jump in and they solve, they try to solve the, the issue or respond to the customer 24 seven and in seven languages. So it's not just in English, in seven languages. Also Charmy um, is a great example of how uh, brands can take and like that take an unsexy or boring um, pro, pro, um, brand that offers toilet papers and make it shine through social media. Charmy is well known on Twitter uh, for their playful interaction with their uh, customers and also with other big brands too. So authenticity, brands need to be authentic. And authenticity is very important these days, especially with millennials. Um, so mm, Airbnb, for example, is an authentic, and many people believe that Airbnb is an authentic brand. So um, or Airbnb social media strategy is what contributes to companies massive success um, in social media. Airbnb successfully uh, used visual storytelling uh, to convey their brand identity and to create user engagement and authenticity in social media. And um, so they are strategically spotlight user generated content and sharing them on, in their different social media pages. For example, they share beautiful shots taken by um, guests and hosts. <clears throat> And um, the next example is, uh, so they need to be resourceful. What we mean by being resourceful? Being resourceful means the company is good at, <coughs> sorry, problem solving. Uh, resourceful companies are full of useful resources and tools uh, for um, coming up with solutions with, the, with every like, you know, um, situation uh, that uh, arises. Um, they, they adapt well and on um, to new or difficult situations and they are able to think uh, creatively. Resourceful brands usually are those who are good with content marketing. For example, business um, trends and insights from American Express um, 
from America Express del delivers you know, insight, insights and inspiration to help other companies, especially small businesses, to grow, expand, and uh, run their businesses. So as we discussed, being resourceful is especially important in B2B marketing. And the next one is um, credible. Brand needs to be credible. Building a reputation for knowledge and expertise and building a brand trust coordinate. Uh, for example, they can use living proof via video and visual marketing campaigns to show how their product works. Or they can more share more info information and details regarding their product and about the rationale behind their decision making to indicate more internal credibility. And also, as all of us know, mistakes happen. So admitting mistakes and asking for understanding and support is another way that can improve brand credibility. And uh, the next, so there are some uh, more examples related to the COVID-19 situation. For example, Doug, Brew Dog uh, Company, um, they used, um, which is an alcohol company, took a proactive stance uh, to the pandemic by using its resources to make hand sanitizer. They had to, and they sent them to the, um, in, U, in the UK, they sent them to the frontline services for free. Uh, to, to supplement this initiative, uh, they offered regular up, updates through their blogs and other social media pages to keep the brand connected to audience and to, they created a real boss. And the, the other example is Levi's. So again, during the pandemic, uh, Levi's uh, had reduced their ad spend However, still making strategic investments to retain its connection with the consumers. For example, they launched the 501 uh, concentrate series, which are live music concerts and uh, using very famous uh, artists on Instagram. Levels also rolled up a branded mobile application in early 2020, uh, building their lo loyalty program and also uh, so, um, they used something called digital sampling. So digital sampling is a tool created by Levi's lab that can provide merchants with a photorealistic 3D denim garments. So they can which help them to accelerate the process of sampling uh, considering all the lockdowns and social distancing, et cetera. And the, um, the other example is Nike. So in response to the pandemic, Nike uh, boosted its digital strategy and direct sales and adapted its message to the new normal. So then their slogan is just do it and they change it to just do it at home. Or also they came up with other uh, slogans like play inside, play for the world, you can't stop us, featuring athletes and uh, regular people playing in their uh, living room and backyard. And digital um, now con contributes 30% of Nike sales, a figure achieved three, <clears throat> sorry, three years earlier ahead of the schedule anticipated before COVID-19. So overall, digital marketing after COVID-19, a very short um, you know, summary. So our digital marketing practices need to be more targeted than ever before. Companies need to understand the persona of the new customer, considering all of the other shift in uh, customer habits, including uh, changes in the um, you know, purchase behavior, online behavior, and social media consumption. And companies need to provide true value to both customer and society, building trust and recognition. And innovation using the latest digital technologies, such as AI, uh, AR, VR, and IoT that we just uh, briefly mentioned should now be at the center of uh, any business operation. SEO organic services that again we briefly mentioned are uh, absolutely vital for long-term growth, which means companies need to focus more on organic uh, search and uh, word of mouth and content marketing, not just paid advertising. And websites are more important that, um, than ever before, as this is the first touch point that uh, customer face. So that's it from my part, and I'm gonna leave it to Dr. Abbas Mirzai to talk about customer experience. Cool, cool. Thanks very much, Helen, and thanks, Rico. Hey, everyone, I hope you had a good time so far. Uh, so as Rico and Helen uh, perfectly 
uh, briefed you on the, uh, the key challenges of branding and how digital uh, transformation and digital marketing can be really that effective thing to overcome some of those uh, challenges. So CX management perhaps is uh, the bridge between the strategic level challenges and practical level uh, solutions. And uh, over the past few years, uh, customer experience management has become uh, quite relevant in terms of a solution to overcome branding and marketing challenges. So uh, I thought you might find this uh, slide interesting. CMO's perceptions uh, of priorities and barriers. Uh, in the past, uh, when I say past, past few decades really, the main focus most of the time when we would have these uh, industry focused surveys, most of the time, uh, managers would focus on revenue and profit, those financial metrics. But as you can see here on the left, we have the priorities for CMOs. Uh, a, a solution pops up as the main uh, priority, not, not the outcome. So technically enhancing customer experience can be that driver of revenue growth, right? Uh, but on the same time, at the same time, we can see that uh, CMOs have this challenge of talking to CFOs and CEOs because uh, the organization in general is uh, risk averse and they really don't want to take a risk. So what is the risk of uh, focusing on customer experience? Let's really get uh, started with, uh, with a real life example. I'm not too sure how many of you are familiar with uh, T-Mobile, uh, one of the network provider in the US market. In 2013, T-Mobile was really struggling. Uh, it was like the blockbuster of, compared to Netflix back in the day. So they were losing customers to uh, other competitors like AT&T or Verizon. Uh, but they started doing a, a massive survey to understand the customer experience, the pain points, the touch points. And then uh, they realized now that there is a, a nice persona, there is a key target audience, likely switcher that we can focus to win them back really. So porting ratio, which means the combination of in and out customers going, like they're talking about switchers, right? So it was in quarter one, 2013, it was 0.59. Technically T-Mobile was, was losing customers to competitors. So if the ratio is less than one, it means we are losing customers. Then uh, they launched this uh, on-career uh, solution. Look at Q2, 1.75. Instantly, they started uh, winning customers back. So where are those likely switchers are going? Sprint, 9%, AT&T, 10%, Verizon, 19 and T-Mobile, 26%. They took the risk of going with on-career, which means you don't need to be locked into a contract for 24 months. That was the most important pain points for those customers that they talked to. But that is risky, right? Uh, no contract means at any time they can move on and have the device and you know never come back. But this is the risk that pays off. After a while, T-Mobile became a uh, number one customer, uh, net, having the highest customers in New York and many other cities. So Verizon was losing 14,000 spring, 47,000 customers, AT&T gained 7,000, and look at T-Mobile, 56,000 new customers, right? From struggling to becoming the hero. What they did, they realized, wow, this is really our hero product, and they labeled it their uh, umbrella uh, customer experience uh, kind of program on career moves. And in 2015, even they launched the on career for, for businesses and it became successful and successful one after another uh, initiatives under that on career uh, kind of program. But uh, any discussion that we have with our industry partners when uh, they come to us uh, for solutions, when we ask them, uh, who are your customers? Who is your key target audience? They give us very uh, broad and vague uh, answers. Like we have strategic account, we have governments, 
and we have a commercial audience. So very, very uh, broad categories, which is very difficult to offer solutions when we have this broad uh, category. As a result, what, one thing we start with when we have this customer experience chat is let's identify customer persona. Let's be more specific about the categories of customers that you want to offer solutions, right? So Helix personas is uh, a great starting point that we discussed in class. And uh, thankfully at Macquarie University in the Department of Marketing, we have access uh, for free to, of course, to Helix personas, which is worth around a million via uh, Helix uh, persona, right? Via Roy Morgan. And uh, Roy Morgan uh, identifies 54 different segments of customers classified in six uh, different Helix uh, communities, right? Uh, leading lifestyles, fair go, and uh, aspirations, other categories. And for example, when we teach our industry partners, like for example, Optus, this is really the starting point and they need to pick a category from here and then uh, narrow down their uh, focus. Perhaps that can be uh, a, a, a live market research for you guys. Business personas, this is another example for you. Uh, motivations to being in business. Do you think, which one of you guys uh, uh, relate the most? Business builder, do you want to be a business builder? Do you, are you, do you feel you are a passionate professional, lifestyle seeker, legacy builder? Which of these categories do you think uh, you fall in? That will help us to offer you a more tailored solution. That is the whole concept of CX, understanding the customer and then offering them solution. It is not just uh, good enough to go with a gender, location, other factors to classify customers. We want characters, we want motivations, and we want expectations, right? Another example of customer segmentation, which is uh, quite linked to what my colleague Rico covered on uh, empowering customers. But this is slightly a different angle of uh, customer empowerment, which is brands have realized they really need to show their uh, social responsibility aspect via even via their customer experience by uh, offering platform to their customers to so they can feel empowered, which is linked to the brand purpose idea. What is your purpose as a brand and how customer experience can help you to deliver on that uh, purpose. So progressive pioneers, savvy seekers, convenience conformers, different categories of uh, customers and different personas based on that empowered segmentation. That allows a business like Nike with that just do it to pick the category that they want to impress the most. We have all heard of Gillette's the best men can be, right? Whether they targeted central survivors or savvy seekers or progressive pioneers with their, you know, they focus mostly on communication, less on product. But uh, you need to know who are you tar uh, targeting and communicating. Otherwise, you will find yourself in hot water and backlash, which was the case for many, many brands post uh, Black Lives Matter movement. Another uh, concept that we will be covering during classes is uh, emphasizing the importance of emotion experience, not just focusing mostly on rational. As we know, a majority of purchase decisions are uh, driven by emotion, but most of current CX solutions are rational. So if I am a network provider, I think I need to focus on a modem that is fast. That is cool, but that is not, it doesn't have that delight factor. It doesn't have that uh, wow factor. So. Where is that uh, surprise element? Where is that uh, obstacle? Where is that challenge that you want to solve? How you want to help your target audience, right? So these are emotional components that really uh, play a major role and many brands are missing. On. And that's what we cover when we talk to our industry partners, when we have our postgrad classes talking about, you know, the CX solutions. So this uh, pyramid of, uh, or the hierarchy of emotional values, it becomes uh, an important factor because you know how Rico and uh, Helen talked about touch points. So in CX, the main focus is 
not just on the touch point, but mostly on the pain points. Because most of the time we want to offer a solution and solve a problem. And that problem is linked to a pain point, right? So we need to identify the feelings under that uh, destroying cluster, the very first cluster from the bottom. Uh, many customers feel they are neglected. They, uh, they are unhappy, unsatisfied, they are stressed, they are frustrated, right? And before, without understanding those touch points, without understanding those feelings, it will be quite difficult to be able to please them or delight them, right? So if someone feels neglected, you need to uh, target cared for from the recommendation cluster. If you want to go up the ladder of advocacy cluster, if you want to turn your unhappy customers into your uh, brand advocates, you really need to have a clear understanding of these uh, factors. And these are really the concepts that we cover in our classes. So there, will be, there won't be any discussion on customer experience without talking about the customer journey mapping, right? Because we want to have tailored solution for different uh, stages of uh, life cycle and different stage of the journey. That can be just the digital journey or that can be the mix of face-to-face, -face, physical and online journey, right? Uh, but we need to identify the journey via floodlights, and then we need to have that spotlight orient orientation focusing on a couple of key points. There are a wide range of templates out there that you can use to develop that customer journey map. Current state, day in the life, uh, future state. These are examples of templates uh, offered by different uh, providers that help you to maybe a very hard for you guys to, to read, but you can jump online and search for CJM mapping templates. So current state gives you that overall view of the journey of the customer. Uh, but the missing bit for many brands is the service blueprint, because you can promise to do many things. As a brand, you can promise to impress your audience, but the challenge is if you cannot, you technically have annoyed them and most likely they will avoid your brand and switch to competitors. So service blueprint is that crucial journey that not only focuses on the front end, the customer view, but also focuses on back end, how we can offer this service from uh, you know, our organization, starting from the organization. So it has the, both the front end and uh, the back end. And that's where most brands coming to us for solution uh, are really overlooking and mostly are focusing on a couple of touch points to, to just get the customer excited short term. And examples, other examples of B2B perhaps. But this slide perhaps uh, summarizes uh, our contribution in this uh, department, uh, because again, there are many approaches to seek strategy development, but here uh, in the part of marketing under this master of marketing, program we have developed this template and we have developed this uh, like checklist that uh, whenever we offer cx solutions we make sure that uh, our clients uh, our students and industry uh, customers and partners they go through these uh, nine steps what is the vision for uh, your cx program what are you going to solve do you want to be an effortless? Uh, what is that your vision? Effortless, that is Uber's, for example, uh, vision. What is your focus in your uh, strategy recommendation? Do you want to focus on one pain point and turn that into a great experience? Or you have this uh, floodlight uh, you know, focus, looking at the overall journey. What is the purpose of this uh, CX strategy? It is 2021 and no longer you can just focus on product and get excited that yes, I got the winning uh, solution. No, you need to also show the, the audience how you empower them, how you help them to get the job done better and uh, to feel more satisfied in their even social life, right? So the brand purpose is an important component. What is the personality of your brand and how your CX solution is in line with that personality or no, uh, your, uh, personality is something and your solution really confuses your audience, right? What is the ratio of emotion to function? Are you focusing mostly on function or no? You also have that emotion injected different, in different touch points. 
how unique is your uh, offering? This is one key question that uh, you need to uh, think about. The, uh, the most effective way is to turn your competitors' pain points into your gain points, all right? So you need to ask yourself, how unique is my CX offering? What are the measurement approaches and what are the metrics besides net promoter score that technically every single brand is using NPS? Let's go beyond NPS and see what are other metrics and what are other measures that we can adopt for long-term consumer brand relationship, right? How you want to communicate uh, your solution? Do you want to launch a hero signature story focusing on your customer, focusing on your employee, focusing on the product, or focusing on the solution, which is that on career, uh, for example, solution? So what is this uh, call to action type engagement? What do you expect from your customer once you launch your uh, solution? What do you want them to do? Do you want them to join on your brand community and collaborate with you or socialize or you know, uh, give you uh, new ideas? Or you want them to post it on their Facebook uh, page, hashtag, for example, Optus, hashtag uh, Airbnb, right? So different solutions, you need to uh, ask yourself how uh, can trigger uh, customer engagement and behavior. So that's all from me in this uh, brief session on uh, customer experience and customer journey mapping. Uh, so now we will be having a quick uh, wrap up session. I will hand it over to Professor Okas, the head of uh, department for uh, for the wrap up. Yeah, I, I think it's important to try and bring together for the audience tonight the key themes that we've been running across, which in my opinion is the connectedness of how brands are supported by social media. Brands are only as good as the customer experience. So in some ways it would be nice if you could try and synthesize that view for the audience because that's really where the Department of Marketing focuses its teaching effort in trying to show the connectedness between what are traditionally seen as separate activities. So perhaps uh, if you can talk through those issues for our mm -hmm. audience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think from a, from a branding overarching perspective, as we have seen here, all the, the challenges that the practitioners have mentioned, um, well, probably one or two of the challenges can be addressed in a particular unit. Many of the challenges are very much interrelated and very much interconnected. So that's why you need, um, if you talk about a, a course, for example, with uh, multiple, uh, multiple units, you need to have an integrated approach um, because Look at the challenges that um, that I introduced you to. If we talk about, for example, the relevance of brands, so how do you stay relevant over time? How do you maintain the connection with your audience? Absolutely. Then we are automatically talking about brand touch points. We are talking about custom experience. We're talking about digital touch points because they become more and more important. So. In order to be to be successful nowadays, it's it's not enough to focus on just one area and, and one unit and become a specialist in one specific area because everything is interconnected, Absolutely. it's complex. Yeah. So you have to kind of choose and design a program that you will be equipped with all the necessary perspectives that a yeah. certain challenge um, yeah. comes with. And that's why, um, we and our, our, our course here, we have certain aspects that we cover in brand management units. Other aspects very much related yeah. to the topics in, in, in brand management and digital marketing strategy, uh, social media marketing, others covered more in detail in customer experience management. I think the important thing is to bring it together. Absolutely. And I think uh, one of the motivations to have uh, student competitions sponsored uh, by industry partners is uh, to not just focus on one topic and have this holistic connected view, but that's the missing in actually in customer experience, disconnected silos, right? So with uh, while your student competition uh, kind of initiative, we try to bring teams from different groups to different schools to then compete and uh, solve a, an industry challenge, because I, I, I agree with you. Uh, 
branding without having that CX uh, mindset, without knowing the digital solutions will be just a promise that yep. won't be delivered. Okay. Yeah, and uh, in addition to like you know the competition that you mentioned in some of the brand in some of the our units, for example, in uh, digital marketing strategy and social media marketing, we have um, some mentorship programs. So in the industry mentorship program, inviting uh, some uh, mentors from um, real life, big big very successful brands to come to the class, not just to deliver a guest lecture to they come to, to our classes multiple times and uh, talking to students and uh, checking their progress in their for example in social media marketing students need to create real social media campaigns and they can uh, receive ongoing feedback from these industry mentors and um, yeah these are the things that we do and they can also be awarded they can win the students can win a uh, best um, social media marketing cool. uh, certificates or a best digital marketing certificate. So these are the things Which that you can, yeah. Obviously help them with that employability and greater chances and having a more uh, holistic uh, mindset and overview for yeah. uh, solving a problem to, to make sure that they are connected across different uh, units. I think that's a great Yeah, thing. to hear, you know, real life challenges yeah. and real life trends and how they can implement it in the, and very engaging classes as a result yeah. because they, they will hear from yeah. industry partners and you know hands-on experiences real cases live cases live issues so that would be cool and i think we are pretty pretty applied in all these different areas so in my brain unit for example the students have just finished an assessment task by developing a, a new brand so they were supposed to come up with a new offering and then they went through the strategic brand management process, developing an identity, a positioning, um, talking about the customers and competitors, um, coming up with brand elements. And that's one very applied approach. And then in terms of the implementation that goes on in, in your class, and they learn how to yeah. uh, market that brand in social media and how they can engage with their audiences and in customer experience management. So that's really important. Mm -hmm. I think it's really interesting that tonight we've focused heavily on the challenges organisations face. But when we go out, we often get organisations who have that mindset also. And from my point of view, it's not just focusing on the challenges, but starting to think about the opportunities. How do they solve problems that they face in a very proactive way, not a reactive way, which starts them thinking about what is my competition doing? How do I react to that? There's how can I drive the competition in the way that best suits my small organization? So yes. we've got to remember that a lot of organizations out there are small and medium-sized enterprises. They don't have the vast resources. Yes. It's like maximizing their potential yes. from the brand that they can build, from the social media platforms that they can afford to buy becomes a critical issue from my point of view. And I think this is where we need to address that challenge in terms of how do we create and change the mindset. And that's something that I think our students yes. over time have really become much more positively framing what they do. Instead of being challenge oriented, they're being much more proactive solution oriented. So is there anything that students need to think about or, or business people need to think about in terms of that from your point of view of us in terms of the solution focused positivity yeah. of the customer experience? I think uh, overall I see this uh, university and industry collaboration where the student plays a hero role is win-win because often we have industry partners come to us for solution for a student kind of uh, solution for example they want to tap into millennials or gen z and they want us to ask students to give them solutions but they're not really clear about their problem themselves right and uh, before being able to solve a problem, they need to also start focusing on the specific challenges that they are facing, uh, which has been, you know, greatly resulted in uh, positive uh, uh, you know, effective solutions for industry partners. But uh, I think if we want to just summarize in uh, one line, or if I want to just pick one of these, you know, key issues mentioned in this slide, I would definitely go with you know, where it starts, it ends up with brand relevance. The main challenge is how to stay relevant and you need really 
all these uh, you know concepts to be able to offer that solution. And this is, I guess, the mindset that not many uh, you know marketing departments or not many programs have. They have they go to this one class and they learn something. They go to the next class, they learn something else. But how these are connected and how I can have this basket of uh, knowledge to offer a solution, I think that is how offering is important. I think that's a nice transition to moving to the next phase of tonight's session. But we might start to actually hone in on what are the key characteristics of the course. We're getting some questions come through, which we'll answer soon. Uh, so we might talk a little bit now about the specific characteristics of this course. So as I mentioned right at the beginning, we're in the top 20 ranked master's courses globally. We're number one in Australia. And we achieve that ranking for specific reasons. Uh, part of that is our deep industry engagement. So as I said, we're a strategic partner with the Australian Marketing Institute, which is Australia's premier uh, industry body where marketers become members and they support the marketing industry. The business school is also AACSB accredited, which is a global accreditation system that focuses on the quality of our teaching and learning. So in reality, what we have is a very unique engagement with industry in terms of our teaching and our course structure. And I'll talk through that a little bit more soon. We also have some of the most advanced teaching facilities in the country with new active learning facilities that we run a lot of our units through, particularly in postgrad. So the, the key selling or value proposition that we have is heavy engagement with industry uh, we bring industry into our classrooms. Uh, the presenters tonight spoke about some of the competitions. So we run student focused challenges with quite significant prize money where students compete to offer solutions to organizations. We have industry engaged teaching, as I said, where part of the unit is taught by an actually industry practitioner. Uh, we have very uh, industry focused assessment, building a portfolio for our graduates to demonstrate to employees their skill set. So what we're focusing on here is the use of live case studies. So for example, last year, our strategic marketing management unit engaged with an entrepreneur who invented a product and our students worked on how to actually launch and market that product for the entrepreneur. The outcome of that, he was so happy that he employed one of our students from that unit. We also have industry internships where students are placed into an industry partner to work over the 13 week semester where they go in and they participate in a specific activity for that organization. We're also moving where that industry internship and partnership can be team-based. So instead of an individual student going out into work to work in an organization, a team of students go from a particular unit. It might be branding or business to business, or it might be drawn from students across the units. So what we have here is a much deeper engagement with industry. And that's why I said right at the beginning of tonight's session, we are very applied very practically focused. We have a blend of theory and application. So what are the units that deliver this? All students engage in four core units, marketing theory, advanced consumer behavior, applied marketing research, and our capstone unit strategic marketing management. These are the bread and butter, so to speak, to give the appropriate foundation of knowledge to allow the students to move into the electives. We have a very extensive array of electives from marketing communication, digital marketing strategy, social media. So what we have there, if you look at that, is groupings of units. The first three I just mentioned are all about how do we communicate and connect with customers. The next units are business to business marketing strategy, strategic branding, new product and service commercialization, strategic sales management. We have in this department a very heavy emphasis on business to business or industrial. And that's a unique feature of the Department of Marketing. We are very strategic focused. We have a heavy emphasis on innovation in our research and a frontline service. So there's two avenues that students can take. One is more the communications, if they want to specialize, 
or more in the industrial and marketing management from a business to business point of view. Interestingly, the sales of business to business globally far exceed consumer business to consumer. The career opportunities in the business to business domain are extensive and they reach out into all sectors that we can think of. Coming next year, we'll have two new units. And it's interesting tonight that a bus spoke about customer experience. We will relaunch a unit on customer relationship management, customer experience, and a new unit on professional and business services. So those units, for example, the professional and business service is tailored to those sectors that are often neglected in university education programs, like consultancies, banking and finance, anywhere there's a professional aspect that is businesses communicating with businesses, selling to other businesses. So that's unique to this particular course in Australia, and it's actually unique globally. You won't find the mix of electives that we have anywhere else in the education market. Where can you go? As we said, the course is tailored to those wanting to upskill and advance their career. The, the selection of marketing career opportunities is vast, from market research consultants, media analysts, marketing specialists, brand analysts, the list goes on and on. I'll give you an example here of the career opportunities. We work with a very large business to business company who supplies products to Australia's largest retailers, Woolworths, Coles, uh, Aldi and other supermarket chains. They like what we do, so they approached us to provide students in the sales management and product management divisions that they have. So again, linking and providing career opportunities is a key feature of the professional outcomes that can be achieved with the Master of Marketing. So what we're doing is pre preparing graduates to go into their chosen careers. And our presenters also spoke about employability. How you can reach out into these career opportunities is because we are preparing you for employment. You cannot guarantee employment, but we are preparing you to meet the market needs in terms of the skills and knowledge that we equip you with. So I think it provides an overview of the course. It provides an overview of our global ranking and the prestige this program has at the moment and will build on. And I think now it's time that we can move to some Q&A. We have a question here about the industry elements. I think we've actually answered that, that we have a very heavy engagement with industry elements from our assessment, our use of live cases, our internships, our industry-focused competitions. So I hope we've answered that particular question. Uh, we have a question here on, can I study the program part-time in the evening? All our postgraduate courses in the Master of Marketing offer evening sessions, and increasingly we offer what's referred to as blended mode, where you can listen to the seminar online and come to a face-to-face -face workshop on campus, or you can have a face-to-face a face -to -face via Zoom. This is unique again to this particular program that we understand that many of our students still work, so we're catering to those work hours. We also run units in what's referred to as intensive and block mode, where we compress the time period for the particular elective. So yes, you can study in the evening, you can study online, and you can come to campus or online, whatever you choose. So it's quite agile and innovative in that particular sense. Uh, we have a question here on, do we teach e-commerce and do we teach cross-border marketing? I think what we've moved away from at Macquarie is embedding cross-cultural global issues in one isolated unit. We tend to bring these issues into every unit where appropriate because that's where that knowledge is enhanced because every organization is impacted by what's happening around the globe. So we embed that in all our units. Do we teach e-commerce? We teach, as Helen was alluding to, social media marketing, digital marketing strategy, 
and part of our marketing comms unit also covers e-commerce issues. So yes, we do cover that. Uh, I think we've answered how Macquarie's Master of Marketing is different to everybody else with our very heavy emphasis on digital, our very heavy emphasis on business to business. We have a question here that I might throw open to the panel in terms of what are the tools, techniques or implications for small business use of branding or small business use of social marketing? Any thoughts? I just jump in very quickly. You can dive in here. <laughs> <laughs> so for small businesses, perhaps uh, the, one of the main challenges of branding records and uh, working on it would be to increase and improve their brand knowledge, brand awareness, you know, getting more after and more and more people knowing about the brand. So one of the activities, one of the assignments in that branding unit that I was part of the site that I developed years ago was that uh, startup brand launch strategy heavily focusing on you know the startups and what are the challenges for startup or small businesses that they want to launch a business because quite often you see the small businesses or startups do lots of rebranding because initially they didn't have but uh, an idea about how far this brand or this idea could go uh, so yes we uh, in that strategic branding unit, uh, one main focus. So not only we focus on established brands and managing brands over time, we also cover that startup and small business kind of uh, branding and tailor to our daily challenges. Uh, yeah, I think probably sometimes uh, entrepreneurs and, and startups uh, think too late about yeah. branding and the issues. Um, so they are very much product focus Absolutely. quite often. You just think that they have the best product, let's just... It automatically will sell. Yeah. Um, that doesn't work. Yeah. Um, so you still... Uh, so my recommendation here is um, start with thinking about the branding issues um, of a startup as soon as possible, because it will affect your your success in the, in the long run. And I know that it's challenging for startups. They don't have the resources that the companies have. So um, they, they work under some restrictions. So they have to be probably a bit more creative, creative innovative yeah. in getting out. The technology is there. Yeah. So compared to 20 years ago, using social media where people share, if something creative comes up, yeah. um, you don't have to pay for that. So that's free. But you have to get to that point where people start sharing it. Um, and, and I think that the technology is there that enables you to reach a big audience, even as a small company, as a startup. Um, but you have to go past through that threshold um, that you're actually um, being perceived in the market. The social media might be able of, to Yeah, do. social media marketing. So it's it's free. Any businesses can set up a, a, a social media page, for example, a Facebook page, and post some branded posts. However, we know that definitely we can't just rely on organic reach these days because of how social media algorithms work. Because, and for example, in 2015, Facebook decided to show less um, organic and branded posts to users and consumers, and instead to show more paid uh, social ads. So that makes you know brands to definitely also um, spend some you know budget on social ads. However, social ads are not very expensive. They are very, I think, um, yeah, they are very cost effective, and uh, so a good um, um, a strategy would be a co using combination of organic and both paid ads in social media and also there are also other uh, elements so they need to brands can um, work on their seo ranking so to make it um, you know to get a higher rank in search engine optimization and it's free again it's organic and it's free and also ppc is another option so mm -hmm. pay bid for some keywords to be their uh, brand will be shown in their um, paid uh, sponsor ad in the Google search, for example. And you cover them in your in yeah, unit, yeah. social media marketing. Yes, yes, yeah, definitely. Products. And another is very specific suggestion is to set um, and use some hashtags for your brand. Yeah. And there are some free applications that brands can use, for example, hashtag report to uh, monitor the hashtag to see how hashtag is doing, uh, what hashtag is more you know um, effective, and what people are saying about you, there are lots of free applications like Google keyboards, hashtag device, Google mentions, and all of that that um, businesses can use. 
and um, yeah, the, these are some suggestions. I, I think all these points are covered across a lot of our units. Yeah. And just to reflect on one of the questions that came through on terms of industry engagement and teaching, yeah. it's really important that we emphasize tonight, we don't lecture you anymore. Our Master of Marketing moves away from lecturing, so you don't sit in a class and listen to somebody like you've done tonight <laughs> for hours. We engage in active learning, which means you come to class and you solve problems, you interact with your fellow students, and you walk away with a skill set. So again, it's preparing for the 21st century. So that, that's all the questions we have. We might just wrap up now with what's coming next. So from May 1820, uh, from five to seven, Macquarie has its postgraduate exploration week. If you really want to find out the right postgraduate course for yourself or get a personalized study plan, join that event, have a chat with academics online. We may or may not be there, depending on uh, what's happening. Uh, but if they ask us, we'll be there. Um, and you'll hear from industry in experts. So scan the QR code the voice. <laughs> and join the event. Take, take your inquiries to the next level and have them answered by the course director who should be at the event or any other academics if you're interested in marketing. Feel free to reach out to us. We're happy to engage. Uh, you'll find us very friendly uh, and engaged in trying to boost your career. Yeah. So we'd like to thank you for joining tonight. And that's it for me as the head. Yeah, thank you very much for tuning in. Um, it was a pleasure to yeah. present a little bit here. And um, yeah, hope to see you soon. Yeah, thanks for um, having us and hope to see you soon. <laughs> thank you very much, everyone. I hope you had a good time. And please do search for us. Uh, we are, uh, it can be found online. Uh, and we are happy to address your questions. Thank you so very much. See you next.